Up until this moment, I have been known as Jane Doe E, and I no longer want to wear this mask. The reason that I decided to speak publicly is about my sexual assault by Larry Nassar. I am tired of being labeled as Jane Doe. This didn't happen to Jane Doe. This happened to me, Kaylee Lorenz, and I'm using today to start a new chapter in my life and move on. I was sexually assaulted by Larry Nassar shortly after my 13th birthday, and it was a dark secret until I put the pieces together last September. Even though I told my parents a little bit about it the day that it had happened, I didn't really realize the impact that it had on me until I finally reported it to Michigan State University Police and heard myself telling the story. As I try to put the pieces of my life together, I'm trying to understand how I was ever seen by Larry Nassar since there had been so many reports made to different people at MSU and to USA Gymnastics. It makes me angry and upset that Michigan State didn't do a better job of protecting me. How could they let this happen to me and so many other young girls and women? Last year was my senior year of high school, and as it came time to decide on a college, my first choice was always Michigan State. I wanted to go there since I was a little girl from watching Big Ten gymnastics and from hearing people say how great it was to go there. But how could I go to a university that betrayed me? I would always be reminded of the sexual assault that happened to me on their campus. This made such a difference in my life that I have changed my major to criminal justice so I can have a voice for those who are afraid to or can't speak up. I would like to thank Rachel for being brave enough to be the first voice of Larry Nassar's victims. Rachel would be the reason for me having the courage to sit here and speak today. Second, I would like to thank Michaela Maroney and Allie Raisman for putting people's judgments aside and telling their personal experiences with Larry Nassar. I feel that it has helped us get to where we are today. Justice for Larry Nassar's victims. Lastly, I want to thank my parents for being my support system and my shoulder to cry on through the hard days these last 14 months. I'm deciding today to try to put this behind me and to focus on creating change. I let Larry Nassar take over my life for too long. I'm hoping that me telling my story will encourage any young girl or woman to come forward and it's never late to start healing. Thank you. Lisa Lorenz is, is Kaylee's mom, and it's L O R E N C Z. Close. I. <laughs> <laughs> like it was so close. All right, go ahead. L O R I N C Z. Okay. Um, I apologize for reading this, but it's been a long, emotional 14 months and, and day, so that's what I'm going to do, so I'm sorry. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank some pretty incredible people that we've come in contact with over the 14 months. Not only because of the difficult jobs that they do day in and day out, but for the way that they do their jobs. First, I'd like to thank Detective Amy Ray, which is actually who Kaylee reported to first, and Detective Angela Mumford for enabling Kaylee to tell her story. Reporting her sexual assault was never a question for her but she was afraid nonetheless. These detectives made sure that they were always there for Kaylee at any point in time. Detective Mumford is one of the very few people with whom Kaylee will talk about the difficult times that she's had because of the assault by Larry Nassar. I'd also like to thank Assistant Attorney General Angie Povolitis and Assistant Attorney General Robin Liddell for their sensitivity, thoughtfulness, hard work and dedication. I want to thank John Manley because he was the first person who would actually listen to me. I had tried to report and it went nowhere. He is also the only other person that Kaylee will talk to about what's happened to her. <clears throat> Kaylee entered our lives a little over 18 years ago and I can remember rocking her and holding her tight and I wondered what wonderful things life would have in store for her. What career path would she choose? What college would she go to? Who would she marry? How many kids would she have? Never once could I have imagined that her path would be forever altered in August of 2012. We put Kaylee in gymnastics at the age of three to develop her confidence and to prepare her athletically for whatever it is she might want to do later in life. 
She competed under the USAG umbrella until she left the sport as a level seven gymnast. It was disappointing for Kaylee on many levels because she had always hoped to compete at the college level, specifically at Michigan State University. Larry Nasser put an end to both of those dreams. In August of 2012, Kaylee's dad took her to see Larry for the third time. This time, however, instead of coming home and reporting to me the exciting stories he had shared with her, she came home upset and withdrawn. When I asked her how it went, she told me that Dr. Nassar had done something that made her feel uncomfortable. I won't go into the specific details of what she told me at that time, but I will always remember that moment. I remember trying to process what she was telling me, but it just didn't seem to fit anywhere in the logical scheme of things. And there was this horrible feeling that came over me that was completely indescribable. I told myself that there had to be a medical reason. Was this sexual assault? Who do I tell? Who would even believe me? This, after all, was Larry Nassar. We didn't discuss the details of that appointment again until September of last year. Kaylee had sent me the press release that Nassar had been accused of sexual assault. Immediately, that horrific, gut-wrenching feeling returned. Although we hadn't talked about it, I had never forgotten. You don't forget that. The following day, I asked her about that appointment, and 14 months later, here we are. There have been many tears, many fears, and many moments of incredible strength during these months. Larry Nassar has pled guilty to sexually assaulting my daughter and all of these other women and girls, so you would think that that would be enough, but it isn't. I have questions. I have questions for Michigan State University, USA Gymnastics, and the USOC. Had any one of these organizations done their job, then Kaylee would have never met Larry Nassar, let alone Lone had been sexually assaulted by him. He would, he would have been fired long before 2011 when Kaylee had her first appointment. They knew, they covered it up, and they are equally responsible for Kaylee's assault. Any person that had any knowledge of any athlete being touched improperly or who felt uncomfortable with Nassar's methods is responsible for Kaylee's assault. Michigan State University has the responsibility to put our children first and to hold those accountable who knew about the, the abuse and or those who covered up these assaults. How is it that a scandal of this magnitude with hundreds and hundreds of victims could occur on MSU's campus and no one knew? Where are the consequences for the victims? Excuse me. The victims of Larry Nassar deserve to know who knew what and when. They also deserve to hear more than idle promises of what they will do moving forward. It's not okay to merely release blanket press statements and think that that's enough. I'm asking MSU to make a loud and clear statement that sexual assault on their campus will not be tolerated by making an example out of those who knew. Only then will I believe that they are truly going to make significant change. Michigan State University Board of Trustees should expect the same. Who knows, August of 2012 was my daughter. The next one could be yours or theirs. If we don't demand change and accountability, then we are just part of the problem. I'm wondering what's going to happen to ensure that those who don't report run a risk greater than money. Jail time? Senator Feinstein out of California is leading the charge for change, but what about our senators? For months I have been trying to reach out to Senator Stabenow with no success. Within the past two weeks, I actually called and left messages for both Senator Stabenow and Senator Peters, detailed messages, and asked them to join me in promoting change and demanding accountability. I have yet to hear from either one of them. I started off by thanking some amazing people. Most importantly, however, 
I want to thank my daughter Kaylee for demonstrating courage and strength beyond her years and to tell her how incredibly proud I am of her. Living through this nightmare was bad enough, but when you make the decision to report, you have no idea exactly what's ahead of you. Kaylee had to relive the details of her assault over and over again. Not only did she have to keep retelling her story, but with every article or press release, it was like she was being assaulted over and over again. We had some very difficult days, and I always told Kaylee that she could change her mind at any time, but she was determined to see justice and to have a voice. Reporting is incredibly difficult because our justice system just does not do enough to protect our young victims. I was appalled that the court was not closed in Ingham County for the pretrial hearings. I was even more disheartened that the defense attorney thought it was okay to try to intimidate my daughter by disclosing personal details about her that would make it easy for those in the gymnastics world or in our own community to be able to identify her. This, however, backfired and Kelly's resilience took over. There needs to be change, significant change, so that minor victims are comfortable reporting and that those who fail to report or cover up abuse pay the ultimate price. Only then will we see real change. I invite Senators Stabenow and Peters to join me in this endeavor. Together, we can make it difficult for institutions like Michigan State University and USA Gymnastics to use money and power to squash the voices of these young victims. Kaylee no longer allows me to rack her, and I no longer wonder about where she will go to school. She's found a little college in southwest Michigan that's the perfect place for her to spend three and a half more years, and I'm excited to take that journey with her. I now know the beginning of her journey and the future looks bright because she is one incredible young woman and I am so proud to be her mom. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, we'll now take questions for 